ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي المقصره اولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious and the most merciful the best of his peace and blessing shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps in the best of manners. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Khutbat al-Jum'ah, as you know, is a place to discuss Khutb al-Ummah, is a place to discuss the most recent important matters. It is a chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to sit together and talk about what matters. Talk about our safety, our prosperity, our deen. And nowadays, Islamophobia is on the rise. The topic of Islamophobia is everywhere, being discussed by a lot of people whether you feel that it's affecting you on a personal level now or not, it's a different issue. But we know it's around us. And it is wise and imperative for us to discuss it openly. We have nothing to hide. There's nothing that we're ashamed of. And we say it openly. We're actually proud of being Muslims. And we will remain proud of being Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end our life on earth. What is Islamophobia? If you look up any dictionary or any source to find the definition of Islamophobia that applies to any kind of phobia, Islamophobia is the prejudice, hatred, bigotry. You need to know these words. We hear Islamophobia, Islamophobia is bad, Islamophobia is this, we need to sign petitions. What is Islamophobia? Hate, bigotry, prejudice, exercised against Muslims, against you. It starts verbally. Dehumanizing you. <clears throat> Accusing you of things that you're never probably even heard of. It starts verbal. But it does not stop there. We know that it could lead to physical actions. Harm. We don't take these things lightly. We need to understand them, discuss them, deal with them in the right way, especially when we are living in this great society of openness and justice and law. Why people become Islamophobic? Muslims are people of reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about reason all over the Holy Quran. Let's reason together. And let's deliver today a message of reason. Why do people become Islamophobic? Unfortunately, the stereotyping, the propaganda, 
portrayal of Islam as a religion of violence. You see it on the news every single day, being discussed in talk shows. Intolerant. You hear the stories and the incidents that people deserve to die because they're not Muslims. Just because they're not Muslims, they deserve to die. Or they express their opinions, they deserve to die. This is how things are portrayed <coughs> every single day. The portrayal that Islam encourages slavery, dictatorships, abuse to women and children, extremism and backwardness. I mean, let's be realistic and let's be reasonable. If someone is introducing a way of life to you that's violent, intolerant, extremist, abusive, does not want to coexist with anybody, you would definitely think, I don't want this way of life. I don't want to know it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want it near me. And unfortunately, this is what's happening. And for a lot of people, it doesn't even stop there. Then they, we have the terrorist attacks that are committed every now and then, and the attacker is Muslim. Although, surprisingly, in a couple of cases, and this is not uh, probably uh, news to you, it starts by saying, we don't know who the attacker is. Or one of the attacks in the, in the U.S., it starts by saying three white men, and all of a sudden, it's a male and a female Muslim attackers. Like, unfortunately, it's a fitna. It's very confusing. We really don't know what's going on. But then, they end up finding a Muslim involved. To prove that this Muslim involved in this terrorist attack is basically a product of this violent religion. So I'm trying to give you the whole story here. This religion of violence is producing these attackers that are violating the law and launching terrorist attacks against civilians. We come up and say, no, 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 this is not Islam. We know it's not Islam. And these are not Muslims. Muslims won't do that. But we want to go a step further to reason what's going on here. We want to deal with Islamophobia differently. We've been through this loop many, many times. Muslims know they're not Muslims. Again, Muslims know they're not Muslims. So how come Muslims are doing it? How come the Quran says that and says that? Because they come and say that the source of the problem is the Holy Quran. The source of the problem is the Sharia law, which is derived from the Holy Quran. And the message comes directly from the Holy Quran. I'm quoting exactly what we see on the news now. Is Islam an inherently violent religion? It's about, it's about Quran being violent, promoting violence. It's in the Quran. It's in your belief. Islam was spread by the sword. That's what history says. This is what we all know. The Quran does contain verses that encourage intolerance and violence. Murder for non-believers. It's in the Quran. What would you say to that? It's in your book. We say, no, no, they misunderstood it. That's not enough. Let's take a couple of claims and let's try to reason them. So, the core belief of Islam, the Holy Quran, is the reason of violence because it contains these verses that encourages violence. We'll go back to validate this in a second, but let's think about it logically. And these arguments were used by many people that we thank them for using them publicly. 
If this is the core belief of all Muslims, 1.7 billion Muslims, why is it committed by a very, very few? People will say maybe because these very few, they just became religious and they're learning their deen. But the rest of the 1.7 billions, you're ignorant, you don't know your deen. You're living your deen as a habit. So you really don't know what's there. But the ones that become religious are the ones that become extremists, are the ones that are producing terrorists. They go. Okay, quick check. How many people go to Hajj every year? Three, four, five million? <coughs> Let's say three million people. The ones that go to Hajj, are they practicing observant Muslims? Let's say half of them. The rest are just doing it as a vacation. I really don't know what kind of vacation. The ones that go to Hajj, you know Hajj is not a vacation. It takes a lot of work. But let's say half of them are committed. Let's say one million Muslim every year goes to Hajj is observant and committed Muslim. Over 10 years we have 10 million dedicated Muslims. By that logic, I should have 10 million terrorists every 10 years. And the damage would be big. If this is truly, if, if, if the cause is truly in Islam and getting closer to Islam and becoming religious, then the outcome should be much, much larger. Again, this is not my argument. People have used it, and it's amazing, and we thank them, people of reason, not just Muslims. Even non-Muslims looked at it and said, the magnitude, the outcome should be much larger if it's in the core of Islam. But people are not thinking. Moreover, every time we have an attacker in a club, or here or there, they turn out to be people with issues. Mental health issues, dysfunctional families, mental instabilities, psychological problems, addictions. Some of them are criminals. So how could that be related to the core of Islam? Islam is spread by the sword. Another claim. What's the reality of it? The reality is Islam, you can easily say, was not spread by the sword. But someone, said, someone would say there were fights. We know they're documented battles. Yes, they were. But those battles were all defensive. And we have proofs. There's no time for it now. But they were all defensive. And the best proof is, easy one, those battles were fought to spread freedom, freedom of choice. Otherwise, you would not have found people of other faith surviving in the Islamic world for hundreds of years. There are churches that are thousands of years in the Middle East. At the time where it was a power, a stronghold of Islam, how come there were still churches? Synagogues, Yazidis. They wouldn't have survived if Islam was intolerant and was spread by the sword because it would have been only two choices. Become a Muslim or die. But history tells us differently. That was not the case. They're still there. So what is the real problem here? The real problem is in the making of the Islamophobic. How does an Islamophobic become an Islamophobic? Starts with ignorance. Ignorance is the first step to Islamophobia. They don't know anything about Islam. And we challenge an Islamophobic. Again, we challenge an Islamophobic if they can prove one of their points. They're completely ignorant about Islam. 
They don't know anything about Islam. They don't know anything about Quran. They don't know anything about the Sharia law or the applications of the Hadith. Nothing. Moreover, some of them are blinded by fear and hatred, which we don't blame them for. We might not be helping to change that idea. We're ourselves guilty of not changing that idea. But if you have a person that's ignorant, step number one of being Islamophobic, step number two, they're blinded by fear and by hatred, well guess what? Such a person will not be able to make a sound judgment. They can't judge things properly. You're, you're afraid, you're fearful, full of hatred, and you don't know what you're looking at. This is why our ulama tell us, in order for you to judge anything in life, you need two things. You need ilm and adl. You need knowledge, and you need to be fair. And to be fair, you have to be unbiased. And you have to be calm. And you need to be subjective. To assess things properly. But this is not the case with Islamophobes. They have no knowledge and they're full of hatred. But there's a third step to Islamophobia or Islamophobes. Which, even, which is even worse. The step of being a beneficiary of Islamophobia. The step of gaining from being an Islamophobic. Political gain. Financial gain. Fame. Going to appear on TV, become an Islamophobe. So you're not only ignorant, full of hatred and bigotry, you're benefiting from being Islamophobe. Put all these three together, we get people like we see. Extremists in being Islamophobes. Because we know that they're benefiting. There's, there's a benefit to it no matter what. And I again say it. Political benefit is the number one benefit. Fame, some of them, maybe there's financial gain. It's possible. But this is what an Islamophobe is. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about this? In the whole Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, Beautiful ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In Allah la yastahi a yadriba mathalam ba'udatam fama fawqa. In the closest interpretation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us to look beyond the surface. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a mosquito, some people would say, Mada arabu Allah bihada mathala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a mosquito in this ayah. إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها which is even smaller than the mosquito فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم those who believe if they hear anything from Allah سبحانه وتعالى even if it seems small or sounds small or sounds unrealistic or strange but you know it's from Allah سبحانه وتعالى you immediately say they know that it's the truth. Pay attention. Because there's knowledge in the Kitab. Knowledge in the Quran. Knowledge in the source of the Quran. There's no ignorance. But the interesting part here. Those who want to commit kufr. And by the way, the word kufr is what? To hide something. And the word cover in English comes from kufr, to hide something. kafaru, those who wants to hide something, فَيَقُولُونَ مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا So those that wants to cover something, now they say, the first party, يَعْلَمُونَ These guys, يَقُولُونَ يَعْلَمُونَ They have knowledge, they studied, they asked, they researched. The other party that wants to cover something, for a reason, يقولون, they're just saying, ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا? What's meant by this? 
There's something weird and something fishy. What's meant by it? يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا It's the same source of guidance that could be the source of leading someone, mis mis uh, leading someone astray. So it's either going to mislead you if you have wrong intentions. You read the Quran, it will mislead you if you have wrong intentions. Because you want to cover something, but it could be the source of guidance. If you are truly, you, you are seeking belief and seeking the truth. And the ones that will go astray are the ones that are fasiqeen. Al fasiq, al ta'ad. Al fasiq, who doesn't want to reach the truth. They have different intentions. If they're seeking the truth, they will reach the truth. But the ones that don't want the truth, they want other things. They want political gains. They want benefits. They want fame. They will definitely not see the right thing. الذين يقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض. Who are these? The ones that don't want the truth. الذين يقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه. What is عهد الله? As a Muslim, we know that the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa taala is to do what? Is to build earth and do not shed blood. This is عهد الله. This is, as a Muslim, we know, we want to develop earth. And he wants us to stop bloodshed or not cause it. But the ones that don't want the truth, that are covering something, they're looking for personal gains. This is why we have wars all over the, the world. This is why we have poverty. We have imbalance of distribution of wealth. Because they're not looking for Allah, which is benefiting the masses which is benefiting humanity, they're looking for personal gains. They want to become multi-billionaires. This is why they're doing what they're doing. And moreover, in the Holy Quran, SubhanAllah, These are the ones that are looking for gains, are eventually the losers. They want to gain money, they want to gain fame, they want to gain power and authority. Well, guess what? They will be the losers, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us. Because you're not seeking the truth, you're seeking your personal interest, you're not looking for the betterment of society and humanity, you will be the loser. <laughs> Moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the continuation of the same ayah, is addressing those people that are not seeking the truth and covering something for personal gains. Allah is reminding you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them, how would you cover or work hard to cover the truth? And he's reminding you of things that you need to ponder upon and think about. You were dead. You came from nothing. And then he give you, gave you life. And then you will die again. That process of life and death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting you to think and use your mind and to judge things properly because Quran is about logic and thinking with an open heart and an open mind. Don't be blinded by your hatred. It's exactly the same thing when people keep saying that it is in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Muslims to kill in Al Baqarah 190 and they stop there. Here it says in the Quran right here. You see it? Verse 190. Fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who fight you. Or just fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they stop. Well, read the rest of the ayat. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Defend yourself. This is what the ayah is saying. It does not say transgress. 
or strike or offend. It says defend yourself. Do not cross your limits. It's regulated. Not just open defense, do whatever you want. In Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who would, uh, would, would oppress or pass their limits. How is this an invitation to kill or an invitation to create violence? Does it stop there? They will tell you, the Quran is saying, We continue the ayah. It's a defense situation. If someone is attacking you, no one on earth, irrespective of their religion, will tell you, do not do anything about it. There are countries that are sending troops across oceans to protect their interest, let alone their safety. We're proud about this. We're not shy of this. This is, this is, this is good. You're asked to defend yourself in a regulated way. Do not attack. Do not exaggerate. Every time there is an invitation to defend yourself, there is a regulation to limit it. This is what the Quran says, but this is what the ignorance out there don't know. The ones that claim that they quote from the Quran, they don't know what they're reading. They don't even know Arabic. Every time it says do it, they say regulate it. If they stop, stop. I mean, come on, how is this an invitation to violence? And this is another answer. Why do we fight back? Because everybody has a right to fight back. And fitna is when you are and you belong to a religion and you're being continuously attacked and you do something you do nothing about it, the followers of that religion will say, What kind of religion is this? It's not allowing me to defend myself. This is fitna. The followers will question the religion if it's feasible for human existence. Anybody will tell you do not defend yourself is illogical. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, defend yourself. And then, at the end of those ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الحرام الحرام You get attacked, you need to push back. And if anybody commits anything against you, you have the right to defend yourself, but do not exaggerate again and again and again. Do not exaggerate. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't just cause mass harm. Don't just retaliate. Push away. This is what the Quran is saying. And then right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to say, after talking about defense, which is security and stability, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, establish security and stability. Immediately. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us is, stabilize yourself, create security and stability, and immediately start the economical process. Anfiq. Start spending money. Build life. So, when you look at it with reason, Allah is telling you, defend yourself, establish security, and immediately develop economy. Is this an invitation for destruction? And one last thing. How could a Quran invite people to violence and dictatorship and in the same Quran, in many, many, many other areas, invite people to dialogue, discuss, question, use your mind, reason. It doesn't make sense. Because if it's a book of violence, we'll never talk about reason and freedom of thought. Just go kill them all. Subdue them. Enslave all humanity. There are books out there that says this. But those books will never say, discuss, ponder, think, evaluate, study, research. They don't go along. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing, addressing Ulul Al-Bab. Put down the hatred, put down the blindness and the fear, and use your mind to evaluate the Quran. You will know it's not a book of violence. Last thing, 
We ask everybody out there, people of reason, to please, if anything happened, do not condemn Islam. Condemn whoever, the criminal, could be a Muslim, is a human being, but it's not Islam. Please do not demean our faith. Our faith has nothing to do with such actions. Do not dehumanize Muslims. Please, we ask you, do not stereotype us. Speak of all Muslims as backwards and suspects. Talk about some laws that have been presented at barbaric values. Calling Muslims barbaric. There's no need to do this. Let's sit down and talk. We can share the good with you. Do not judge Islam by some Muslims' actions. By doing this, we will eliminate Islamophobia if we come to terms and use our minds. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all officials, including the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, for being reasonable when it comes to Islamophobia and always denouncing it. We need people of reason to, to, to discuss this and eliminate it. And it will only be eliminated if we resort to reason, not violence. So it's not Islam that's inciting violence, it's the Islamophobic that's inciting violence and hatred. We invite everybody, ta'alu ila kalimat sawa. Let's discuss, let's reason, and we, inshallah, can share with you the goods of Islam. You like it? Use it. You don't like it? That's fine. No compulsion. We're not here to, to, to force anybody into anything. This is the Islam we know. And this is the message we hold to all humanity. And I hope, inshallah, you'll take it back to your families and friends and the whole world. Be proud of your deen. Be proud of your book. Adhere to it. Don't run away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and our minds, to help us understand Islam and help us apply it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and protect all of us across the globe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower us with His mercy.